Well, we have three standards in our basketball program, which are discipline, hard work, and exceeding expectations. And we feel like that we have a blueprint of what it takes to be successful at ECU, but those are the three staples for sure. Well, the price of admission to be involved in our program for a player or coach standpoint is hard work, and there's nothing in between it. Um, and so every day, that's a combination of what we do each and every day, and it's a big event. The kids look forward to it. Um, it's got some numbered different uh, runs that they do, but it is also in the middle of all that, being able to answer what our team standards are, or what our core values are. Well, I like the returners that we have. Um, you know, they were the ones that were really pushing those kids who are now pros uh, a season ago. And so then you look at that we have the highest ranked recruiting class for freshmen that we've ever had, 48th in the country. And so those kids were looking at for them to come in and, and be incredibly successful and, and play immediately. I felt they gave me the uh correct tools to be equipped to be able to lead a team so now I'm ready to step into that role and see what I can do for what they did for me as a freshman do it for my freshman this year. You got to be in the gym to get better. You have to always stay on top of everything whether that's watching film, getting in the gym, putting shots up or even just working on your conditioning. Personally just want to make sure our team is where we need to be. Um, we want to definitely finish better than we did last year but for the season overall we want to make it to the Sweet 16 if not further. Nothing works unless you do. And so the ability to get in the gym, um, create a disciplined routine. Uh, and th this group is uh, definitely a workmanlike attitude about them. And so my hope is that when you see really good kids working really, really hard, they'll see the success and results from it. Uh, 
uh, with women, they got to trust you. And so I'm a big believer in just building relationships and, uh, and my coaching staff too. Um, and then just getting up on campus and looking at the beautiful palm trees, it's unbelievable. The campus is beautiful. Danny White brought me here to change the philosophy of the program and uh, just be ready for it, be comfortable being uncomfortable. Because anybody knows that when you have to change as a human being, you're uncomfortable. And so I think that goes in basketball games too. You're never going to be comfortable in basketball games. So we got to learn how to be comfortable with change. And so we talk about that every day. Obviously, every single day in practice is something new for them. And that I, you know, I'm a big believer in not looking in the rearview mirror. I don't know what happened in the past. I, I don't really look at old films. I just want to go forward. And you know, everybody's coming in with A's. So let's let's bring this to the season and be really excited about it. I tell them all the time, this is not about Coach Abe and my staff, this is about them, whatever their goals are, And but we're not gonna reach those goals until we take it one day at a time and every single game is gonna be the biggest game ever. And so um, we're, gonna, we're gonna treat every scrimmage, every practice, like we're trying to win the biggest game of our lives. And you know, I think that I've been left with some great players and great people and great athletes and so, now we're just trying to go one day at a time and, and whatever goals they want to achieve, those are the goals they'll achieve. Um, of course it's different because it's not what we're used to, but it's a good kind of different. I think everybody as a team is embracing the change that Coach Abe is bringing. And that's just not only on the court, but off the court, how she's um, pushing us to be better women and be better teammates to each other and things of that nature. Um, it's been an amazing experience. From the first day she came in, the first couple of weeks of workouts, you can definitely tell the pace change, like um, everybody working harder, a lot of more com communication. Um, overall, as a team, it's just been a lot more structured. Um, I like the pace. You can tell that she comes from a winning program, and she's trying to instill that in us. Basically, just hard work and fight. Like, anything's achievable. Um, the platform that she's laid out for us, we can, we can basically achieve anything this year. They really, really like each other a lot. You know, they spend a lot of time with each other. A lot of coaches spend a lot of hours and doing team building things and, you know, making the team enjoy each other. And because that's important when you have a good basketball team, you all have to be in it for the same thing. And um, they, they really like each other and they're a lot of fun. And, you know, their personalities are great. And I want their personalities to shine. I like the fact that they're all different and they come from different backgrounds. So, you know, it's been really awesome to know that they really care about each other. When you play our teams, I, w I want the other team to walk away knowing they had a battle and that our players weren't afraid of anything and they were fearless the whole game and they played to the last minute. And on, in the time I've been a coach, those have really been my teams. From the CFE Arena in Orlando, Florida on the campus of the University of Central Florida. We present Women's American Conference Basketball here on the American Digital Network. It's, it's the East Carolina Pirates against the UCF Knights. And good afternoon, everyone. Eric Lopez here alongside Despina Barton. And Despina, the UCF Knights coming off a huge tie, knocking off nationally ranked USF and their big in-state rivals. And they were led by their star player, Aaliyah Gregory. Yeah, Aaliyah Gregory in front of a hometown crowd. She's a strawberry graduate had a career high night scoring 34 points she led this group in that upset against usf and not only has she been leading the knights in scoring this year but has nearly doubled her production here in conference play from a year ago the east carolina pirates are looking to kill the ucf momentum and they'll be dependent on their star senior Kristen gaffney yeah the 6-1 graduate student is leading the pirates in scoring rebounding field goal percentages and minutes played on the court coach Masek saying though it's her maturity and ability to lead that has been contagious in her locker room and she's gonna be a big part of the keys for east carolina here to pull off the win yeah east carolina must finish strong and the most recent outings for them they've had these scoring rules seven and a half minutes the last time they face the Knights in which they fell and then it's also going to be important for them to get Gaffney and Bree McDonald activated early. These two girls combining for 43% of the point production and UCF lim limited them to just 17 the last outing. For the Knights it's dominating the boards. Yeah of course in the last meeting against ECU the Knights out rebounded the Pirates 49 to 37. They're going to have to do that again tonight and again of course avoid a letdown Eric. This team had an emotional physically draining game on Tuesday. It's here where they have to pick up the pieces and keep the momentum going. We'll have the starting lineups and the opening tip when we return here on the American Digital Network. 
Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my son being realized. This doesn't have a price. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When learning creates leaders. Ideas are ignited, focus gets sharper, and service connects generations. We commit our expertise to heal, to discover, and to drive our region forward to a brighter tomorrow. East Carolina University. Tomorrow starts here. We are American. We are the spark that ignites, dazzling. Brilliant, intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. Tickets are now on sale for the 2017 Frontier Communications American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship. Head to Mohegan Sun Arena March 3rd through the 6th to watch all 11 American teams in action fighting for an automatic berth to the NCAA Tournament. Tickets start as low as $20. Get yours today by visiting the Mohegan Sun box office, going online to mohegansun.com or Ticketmaster, and also available by phone at one 800 745 3,000. Welcome back here to the CFE Arena for coverage of the American Conference Women's Basketball here on the American yeah. Digital Network. Eric Lopez here alongside Despina Barton. And Despina, as we go through the ECU lineup, a change here late. Yeah, Eric, Justice G is taking the point guard position over as a freshman. She's getting her first career start tonight. Also, Khadija Toure will be out here with her in the front court. Bree McDonald, Dominic Clayton, and Kristen Gaffney, who we've featured in the open. And, for, of course, for the UCF Knights, same lineup that got them the victory last time out against USF. Yeah, starting at that guard position, out Ashley Polacek, the five foot five sophomore from Ottawa, Canada, starts to lead the nice Jocelyn Massey, a big force down the paint from Detroit, Michigan. Aaliyah Gregory, the star, the production leader for this night squad. Zakira Lewis, a sharp outside shooter from Bartow, Florida. And then Tolu Amakori, the forward from Greenbelt, Maryland, rounding out the starting bunch for the home night. It's a Knights team that's won three in a row to Spina, and they've kind of found themselves here with this lineup. You know, earlier in the year, UCF has been changing the lineups, and now today it's East Carolina that makes a change with G, who's super fast, the freshman, maybe trying to change things up here a little bit as we get set for the opening tip here. So always an interesting chess match between these two. Yeah, you want to find what's worked. And for East Carolina, so far it's been that Frazier two Ray combo, but now with enough confidence, Coach obviously feeling very comfortable putting Justin G out there. And of course, the head coach for East Carolina, Heather Macy, in their seventh season, still very positive. Feels good about this team, the unity they have. And it's just a key of just kind of getting over that hump. You know, they've had that dry spell, it seems like, at every game that's kind of cost them. And yeah, and something Coach Macy talked about before the game. She said, listen, we only had four returners off last year's squad, two out with a knee injury, so only two girls left of that core group here for ECU. And there you see the first-year head coach, Katie Abramson henderson They call her Coach Abe in this area, and what a job she's done in her first season here at UCF. Oh, yeah, this team's riding, it, like you said, a three-game win streak in tonight, and finally you're seeing the girls buy into everything Coach Abe has been teaching them that's been coming with these last few victories. You see the jubilation and practice and it carries over to the court and we're underway here is the knights in their whites east carolina in their purple is the knights win the tip Aliyah gregory coming off that career high 34 points they go inside early and they get the basket in to take the early two to nothing lead yeah polachek was pretty fair and balanced there on the baseline waited for the opportunity to toss into omakori and it was a perfect in, in pass so here comes east carolina with the ball now Gaffney inside the featured player, but here's a jump shot is short by McDonald. 
And the rebound to the ninth. They need McDonald. She had a, she had a near double double in the first time these two teams met. They met on January 18th up in Greenville in a very tight game. UCF won 54 to 42, but it was a much a deceiving score as that game East Carolina actually led by four with seven and a half minutes to go in the game. The Knights finished the game on an 18 to two run as they picked up their first ever win in Greenville. Gregory with the shot, no good, but the putback is up and good. And it's once again, a good start for the Knights rebounding Omakore there gives the Knights a four point lead. Back to buck, back to back buckets there for Omakore. Just patient, she's finding a, a body boxing out as she did here on the offensive end, but the shot fell for the freshman, Justin G. So just as G getting her first career start, hits the three off the corner to get the Pirates on the board. Now Palachek brings it up for UCF. Of course, that game on January 18th was the first time ever UCF won in Greenville. They had been 0-9 at East Carolina prior to that game. Zai Lewis, the senior, draws a foul. And she'll get a chance to go to the line. Zai doing what Zai does, Eric. If she doesn't see the shot out on, out on the wing, she'll definitely drive in and make an opportunity here. The missed bucket and the putback by Oma Corey. Solid work for the young lady down in the paint. So now to the line, the senior out of Bartow, Florida. Zakira Lewis, the senior. Makes the first thing. You know, going into the season, Despina, for UCF, she was kind of the focal point of this team, but certainly... With Gregory uh, taking her game to a different level, Zai has kind of become that number two option offensively, taking some of the pressure off of her maybe going into the season as she makes both free throws to give the Knights a 6-3 lead. Yeah, Zykira Lewis had to carry this team the past three years. Well, it was just an added, you know, um that Aaliyah Gregory started to find her own footing here and able to contribute. And yes, with the workload, and you've been seeing the benefits. Toure hands it off to G. This is a young East Carolina team. Had eight new faces on this year's ball club, including four freshmen. Here's an inside shot, no good by Claydor, but the putback is up, no good. Luke again going back up strong, but unable to finish as McDonald and the Knights come away with the ball. But good effort there by East Carolina. They got to compete on the boards there, and that was a good a possession from that standpoint. Yeah, but I can bet Coach Abe wasn't happy in that standpoint as the girls were not boxing out. That should, possession should have ended way earlier than it did. Near deflection there, Polachek gets her shot rejected. And here come the Pirates, trying to push it up. G, who is this, maybe the fastest runner on the team. Super fast, actually had to kind of slow down a little bit, get used to the Division I level. Sometimes as a freshman, you go too fast, you're out of control. So she's been learning, earning this start today. Well, if you got numbers, it's fine. But when you're out in front of everybody, it could be kind of scary. Yep. yep. <laughs> trying to feed the post to Gaffney, and the ball's deflected and intercepted. Here comes Gregory. Gregory, nice pass inside, and the putback is good by Omokore. Timeout East Carolina as Omokore off to a fantastic start here for the Knights. Yeah, Omokore, the bread and butter. She's the solid force here in the first couple of minutes of play for UCF. And so we'll take a break here with 6.57 to go in the first quarter. It's UCF leading East Carolina 8-3 here on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my son being realized. This doesn't have a price. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When learning creates leaders, ideas are ignited, focus gets sharper, and service connects generations. We commit our expertise to heal, to discover, and to drive our region forward to a brighter tomorrow. East Carolina University. Tomorrow starts here. Tickets are now on sale for the 2017 Frontier Communications American Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship March 9th through the 12th at the Excel Center in Hartford. Be there as all 11 American teams compete for the conference crown and an automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament. 
single game and championship weekend ticket packages are on sale this month and can be purchased online at excelcenter.com or by telephone at 877-522-8499. We are America, the conference of opportunity, the opportunity to chase dreams, the opportunity to make your mark and change the game, because that's power. We are power. Welcome back here. Early going here at the CFE Arena in Orlando, Florida. 6.57 to go. First quarter. UCF leading East Carolina. 8-3. to three. Eric Lopez alongside Despina Bard. Despina, fast start for Tolupe Omokore. 3-for-3 three three from the field. Six points early for the Knights. Yeah, this is what Coach A was talking about. They wanted to take the right shots at the right time. She felt the last meeting between these two teams, it was an up-and-down street ball contest where the girls' selection shot selection was not there. So far, proving them wrong. Knights coming out with a bit of a press here as Torre trying to break it. Here comes East Carolina, shot from the perimeter. Just not falling, but another offensive rebound. And the early going, at least early here, Despina, is East Carolina is battling with UCF on the boards. You talked about that. That was a big key. UCF in the first meeting dominated the boards. 49-37 to 37 edge over East Carolina. And early on, at least, East Carolina right there matching them on the boards as Clater will go to the line. Yeah, it was Coach Macy saying, you know, we know they're hard to battle with down in the paint. We have to match their physicality. And that starts right here in the tempo and battling it out. And that's why Claytor is on the line right now. She stayed with it, tracked down the ball. The yep. Knights, though, this time. Dominique makes one out of two. The freshman out of Winston-Salem, part of four freshmen on this team. And it's very highly recruited class for the Pirates. Very young team, as we mentioned. Eight new faces, four true freshmen on this roster. And uh, they've heard, certainly have had their lumps, but uh, still competing here. As we're uh, UCF moving the ball. You see there Cornelia Wright, the freshman for the Knights, checked in for UCF. Hands it off to Gregory. Gregory on the right side, pulls up, shoots and scores, beating the shot clock buzzer. Aliyah Gregory with her first basket gives the Knights a 10-4 lead. Yeah, it was earlier in the season the coach over the Knights realized the hang time that Aliyah Gregory had and had to input that jumper. And you see it going to work right here. Her just being able to elevate herself over the opponent. Cornelia Wright with the bounce back on the break to Gregory who finishes. A nice dish by the freshman Wright and the finish by Gregory. Those two kind of local phenoms here. Obviously KK Wright, a, a graduate of Jones High School here in the heart of Orlando. And then just down I-4, Leah Gregory, Strawberry Crest grad. There's Gaffney getting away there and scoring. So the star player, Kristen Gaffney, the leading scorer on the Pirates, was in foul trouble when these two teams met back on January 18th. Was held to a season low, four points, gets her first basket there. And that will be an offensive foul on Cornelia K.K. Wright, her first for the freshman there. And it looked good call there. It looked like just being a look like she pushed off. Yeah, there's definitely that arm bar situation going. You know, you're just trying to create space, but right at top of the key in front of the official, maybe not the right choice at that time. And so it's a 12-6 lead for UCF, East Carolina basketball. As you see, Alex Frazier now, who checked in for the Pirates, throws the ball away, stolen by Zai Lewis. Lewis takes it all the way and scores. And Zai Lewis, who's in the top 15 in the country in steals, picked one up right there. That is where you like to see Zai. She loves reading the pass, getting out in front. That's where she's most comfortable. You just got to be real careful of tossing the ball over to her side of the court. 14-6, they go feed it inside to Gaffney, who's surrounded by three Knights, ball loose. And, and talking to Coach Abramson Henderson, one of the keys is to put a lot of bodies on Gaffney. As East Carolina will inbound the ball here. Trying to get it inside. And a lot of hands in there, and a reach-in foul is the call. Here's another look at Zakira Lewis's pick and finish. Just solid. She knows what to do with the ball. There's no hesitation, and it's counted. You know, easy two buckets. Frazier trying to inbound. Finds Gaffney off the glass. No good. And the rebound by Schuler, who checks in. Niela, Niela Schuler, the redshirt sophomore of Orlando. And there's a nice basket again by the Knights. As Aliyah Gregory now starting to warm up there. Has six, and the Knights' lead is ten. 
Not the start the Pirates were looking for after getting off to a great start in the first quarter on Wednesday night at Memphis, scoring 23 points. As Gaffney up and under, no good. And a rebound there to Fifi and Dorr. Here come the Knights pushing it. Gregory going all the way to the basket. Puts it up. Ooh, just left it short. But the ball is off East Carolina. And the ball will remain with the Knights. And East Carolina... <laughs> There's Massive substitution Coach Macy here. Coach Macy going to the bench, and we and we talked about it. Not afraid to go to the bench early here. Trying to keep her team fresh here. Swapped out four jerseys, so you have fresh, fresh legs out there for East Carolina. The inbounds play into Zakira Lewis. Lewis too strong on that three, and the rebound to Bannister. He's in the game here. Now here come the Pirates. And it's Torre. Toure with the ball to McDonald. Bree McDonald, the second leading scorer. Bannister from way out there. Short on the three-pointer. Maybe a little too long on that three. A little too far from the range there. And Bannister didn't play with the team last outing against Memphis. Had some medical appointments to tend to. So this is yep. her first game back. A Florida kid out of Jacksonville, Florida. So a bit of a homecoming, if you will. Jacksonville about two hours away from here in Orlando. 3.45 to go first quarter. Knights with a 16-6 lead. As Polacek back in for UCF to Gregory. Gregory to Schuler. Schuler from the top of the key. Too strong there in the rebound to Bannister. And so Bannister brings it up for East Carolina. Toure to McDonald. Bree McDonald. As they swing it around. There's a three again from Bannister. No good, and now here come the Knights with the rebound. Polachek looking for numbers, doesn't have it. Pulls it out. There's nice Aliyah Gregory with a pull-up. No good. But again, the Knights with an offensive rebound. Now they'll reset. That was Nyala Schuler. She does a lot of the heavy lifting for this Knights team. Pulling down that board was exceptional against USF. Polachek feeds the ball in the inside. Fifi and Dorr, two uh, out of control there. Misses, and Bannister has it for the Pirates. East Carolina bring it up. Toure. They swing it around. McDonald for three from the corner. Hits it. Bree McDonald, a redshirt senior from Georgia. Yeah, Gets that the was Pirates within seven. Beautiful read by Toure to see her. McDonald wide open on the corner. And you knew she had that second, and the shot was just beautiful. Gregory off a pick. Pulls up, and no good. Offensive rebound. Schuler puts it up and scores. Schuler, really a player that Coach Henderson raved about you know we were asking about you know other players on the team it's like you better make sure you bring up Schuler, who does so many of the little things for this team there's a three too short but a loose foul there as the rebound was picked up by dominique claytor but Schuler, who didn't score in the south florida win but had 10 rebounds in the victory maybe one of their better defenders on the court could guard four positions watch her go to work here down in the paint though Oh, excuse me, this is the shot on the wing for McDonald, the three that brings this game within 11. Nine-point Nine. UCF lead. <laughs> they drive in, too strong, and the rebound to the Knights here. Oh, McCorry, that was McDonald's three there. They need McDonald's points production. It can't just be all Gaffney, especially with the UCF's defense clearly just being a focusing in on Gaffney in the early going as Zy Lewis with the ball for UCF to Schuler. Schuler looking the feed inside to Polachek. Polachek, about 13 on the shot clock. Lewis to Gregory. Gregory drives, pulls up, draws the foul and gets the basket. Aliyah Gregory, the junior, scores and will go to the line and give the Knights an 11 point lead. It's it's so nice to see this pull-up J work for Leah Gregory. You know she's the first one in the gym in the morning putting up shots, calling coaches ahead of time to get in there as soon as she can. And for this to happen now, you kind of find and feel her rhythm. Gregory coming into this game averaging 21 points a game in conference games, second in the league in scoring and since conference play has started. Makes the free throw in UCF with a 21-9 lead over East Carolina with a minute 35 to go. G, who's back in for East Carolina. They swing it around. McDonald. Again, G. G trying to drive. Kicks it out. Pull up jumper. No good. Rebound Gregory. And Gaffney be being surrounded by two UCF defenders. East Carolina's trying to find there, and they're not having success. Lewis for three. Hits it. Money. 
Zykira Lewis is money. A 15-point lead for the night, so any early concerns about maybe UCF having a letdown after their biggest win in program history, uh, they've come out ready to go here in the early going, Despina. Yes, at least here in the first quarter. But you know, Eric, it's it's a four-quarter game. you got to be in this the entire time. No letdowns. And Coach is going to preach that no matter who your opponent is. You can play with anybody. There's a three-point shot by Khadija Torre as Torre hits it. As UCF now with a 24-12 lead here in the first quarter. Polacek to Schuler to Lewis. Lewis drives, pulls up, off glass, good. The senior, Lewis, with the basket, and she's off to a great start. Here in the early going, nine points for Lewis as UCF leads 26-12. What's great about all these UCF guards, if they're not seeing the open shot, they're finding a way. They're going to pump fake and drive. They're going to create something out of nothing. And before that, last year, they couldn't do that. A 14-point lead for the Knights. Last shot here. Three-pointer is good by Toure. So the Pirates staying in this first quarter with the three-point shot as they hit the three at the buzzer to... Cut the deficit to 11 as we reach the end of the first quarter. A first quarter that saw the Knights come out shooting 57% from the field. And they were led by Aliyah Gregory and Zy Lewis, each with nine in the first quarter. And at the end of one quarter, it's UCF leading East Carolina 26-15. You're watching women's basketball on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. De ver o sonho meu do meu filho sendo realizado. Isso não tem preço. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When learning creates leaders. Ideas are ignited, focus gets sharper, and service connects generations. We commit our expertise to heal, to discover, and to drive our region forward to a brighter tomorrow. East Carolina University. Tomorrow starts here. We are American. We are the spark that ignites, dazzling. Brilliant. Intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. Tickets are now on sale for the 2017 Frontier Communications American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship. Head to Mohegan Sun Arena March 3rd through the 6th to watch all 11 American teams in action fighting for an automatic berth to the NCAA Tournament. Tickets start as low as $20. Get yours today by visiting the Mohegan Sun box office, going online to mohegansun.com or Ticketmaster, and also available by phone at one 800 745 3,000. And welcome back here to the CFE Arena in Orlando, Florida. You're, listening, you're watching coverage of uh, the American Conference Women's Basketball here on the American Digital Network. We get set to start the second quarter. UCF with a fast start up 26-15. Eric Lopez alongside Despina Barton. And Despina, I want to read you a couple numbers that jumps out from the first quarter. UCF shooting 57% from the field. East Carolina 27% from the field. And then all the talk, Gregory, nine points in the first quarter. Lewis, nine points for UCF. 18 points combined. Meanwhile, Gaffney for East Carolina, hard time getting the ball. UCF putting a lot of people in front of her, one for three, two points. Well, that's exactly what UCF intended to do. You knew they were going to come out with a double team against Gaffney. you got to shut down their leading score. The problem is, on the other side, East Carolina has two people to shut down, possibly three down in the paint when you got Elma Corey going. So that's perfectly explainable. The Knights are executing on all facets right now. Torre, who had six points to lead the Pirates in the first quarter, misses, and the rebound to Lewis. Lewis pushing the ball up. Oh, she changed her mind, was trying to dish it off there, and the ball is deflected and is stolen, and now it will be East Carolina basketball. 
it's fun to see her and the true freshman Justice G kind of be matched yeah. up speed for speed. Yep. Underway here in the second quarter, UCF coming in 16 and 9, 6 and 6 in the conference. They've winners of three in a row in the conference. It's McDonald with a fadeaway, no good, and the rebound there to UCF in Omakore. UCF six conference wins already in the American, the most in school history since they joined the American Conference. East Carolina, of course, with some injuries and in, in, one and twelve in the conference, ten and sixteen. The second meeting between these two teams this year. They met back on January 18th in Greenville. UCF won 54 to 42. There's a foul inside. They tried to do the lob there. This being Apolacek was trying to go the lob inside there. It looked like to Omokore, and uh, she got uh, pushed there before it was, she was jumping up to try to get the ball. Yeah, there was definitely some contact made to Omokore. It's like checking herself right now. <laughs> I bet she had the wind knocked out of her. Yeah, here's the replay there. Ooh, looked like a yeah, contact there. Omakori, a tough, tough player. CFO inbound the ball, and Gregory comes right back in. Of course, these two teams met in Greenville. UCF 0-9 lifetime in Greenville prior, prior to that victory. Oh, that ball, Aaron pass, and Gregory saves it before the ball goes into the backcourt and avoids a back, uh, backcourt violation. Now Gregory feeding the post on McCorey. As you got Thigpen there in the game for UCF. Gregory. Trying to feed the ball, and again, not good hands by the Pirates' defense, and they get the steal. Now is Carolina bringing it up. Trying to push the tempo here. They were trying to find Gaffney, but again, this being as the ball is deflected, two Knights defenders inside there on Gaffney. They are making sure that Gaffney has got a, right now has got a lot of attention. Yeah, they're doing great on covering her front and her back end, and you're hearing the Knights communicate a lot more on this de defensive front. And not only that, every white jersey is finding a purple jersey as soon as that ball goes up. Fundamental basketball going on. Gaffney now from the top. Hands it off to G, the freshman. Toure into Gaffney. And Gaffney, too many steps. And sometimes when you're... Having, they're having a hard time getting the ball to you. You maybe speed up your play once you do get the ball, and I think that's what happened there with Gaffney, maybe a little too quick trying to think through the basket, knowing that she's going to bring a lot of defenders and attention on her. Interesting story about Gaffney. She graduated with Van at Vandy and had one more year of eligibility, and she personally called Coach Heather Macy, letting her know that, hey, I want to play for you one more year at least. Coach Macy and her kind of have a longstanding relationship. Coached her at camps growing up. So this was the only place for her to go in her mind, and she only wanted to lace up in the East Carolina jersey with her last year of eligibility. Well, McCorey missed a shot for the night. East Carolina now brings it up. Dominique, the freshman there, handed it off there to Johnson, and ball out of bounds. He'll go over to UCF. Yeah, Gaffney, of course, went to Vanderbilt, SEC school, had an injury-plagued career, had a knee injury in high school that kind of flared up again and during her days at Vanderbilt. She redshirted. She had an extra year of eligibility. As a grad student, you could do that, and she decided to go to Coach Mazu, who she knew, uh, and came to East Carolina, and the Pirates are certainly happy to have her. It's been a tremendous year for her. One of the leaders on this Pirates young team. As UCF, a young team themselves, Gregory to Polachek to Lewis. Lewis to Polachek from Canada. Oh, nice feed inside. What a pass by Polachek to Omakore, who scores. He's got eight, but what a pass by the point guard, Polachek. Polachek and Omakore have something going on right now. They can literally give each other a look and know where to be and where to toss the ball. That was a beautiful play. And get it. And we get a second look here. Only looking down court. Nobody sees her eyes. Omakori there on the flash. You got Oma it, girl. <laughs> Omakori nodding her, saying, great pass there. What a play by Polachek, who did draw the foul there on the blocking call. They go inside to Gaffney. He's trying to draw the foul. No call. And again, two UCF defenders on Gaffney. Tremendous effort on both ends for Omakori to stay poised with her, her defense there on the big girl Gaffney. Not they the go course of side as Massey tried to finish. No, but guess who? Oh, McCorey with another rebound. And she earned herself uh, a foul there as he drew the foul. And Oma Corey off to a phenomenal job. Eight points, four rebounds in the early going for Oma Corey. And she earned herself a trip to the line here. Just a tremendous effort on both ends. She's not losing that energy or that oomph. In fact, she's kind of driving that for the Knights right now. 
First free throw is up and good for the sophomore, uh, Greenbelt, Maryland. As Oliveira comes in for East Carolina. And Omakore, second one is up, too strong. But look at Omakore with the hustle, giving the Knights another possession. What a first half for Omakore. Has set the tone for UCF. Gregory pulls up. Nice score there by Gregory. Smooth by the junior. She's in double figures with 11, game high in the game, and UCF's lead up to 16, 31-15. You got to think for Coach Abe, it's so nice to see all the pieces come together at this point in this conference play. They have an opportunity tonight. If they defeat e ECU, they would sweep the series on the year. The only other team they've done that against is Houston. So it's about keeping these girls going at this pace, keeping them doing what they do well. Gregory driving all the way, loses the ball, and it's picked up by the Pirates. Pirates looking to bring it up now. They don't have the numbers. Bannister, though, not shy, pulls up a three, no good. And a foul inside there as it looks like Oliveira earned herself a free throw there. Oh, nope, will be a side out for East Carolina. Now is UCF with a 31-15 lead here. 6.07 to go. Second quarter, East Carolina to inbound. Is Alex Frazier. Frazier feeds the ball inside. They'll kick it back out. Bannister. Richard Senior, they go inside. Drive, and ice play off the glass by Frazier. Scoring for the Pirates, and it's 31-17. Frazier creating her own lane there, keeping her shoulder square, found the bus bucket, and kind of started to end the bleeding here that was happening as this team hadn't scored for a little while. They feed inside the ball, and a foul is called. And Fifi and Dor was inside there, and UCF feeding the ball in the post early on, attacking East Carolina inside which goes along with one of your keys in the pregame about UCF dominating the paint, dominating the points, and getting points on the in the paint. And they're doing that as Fifi Endor, the junior at the free throw line, makes the first. It's just the smartest way to attack. Those are the highest percentage shots to get down there. And only that is protecting the board. They have, you know, UCF passes the eye test. They outsize ECU at this rate. They have to capitalize. In their first meeting on January 18th, as Endor makes the second free throw, UCF outscored East Carolina by 10 in the paint. They ended up winning the game by 12. So that was a big part of UCF's victory in East Carolina in January. They lead here by 16, 33-17. Five and a half minutes to go here in the first half here. As East Carolina trying to... Now, if you're East Carolina, you just got to be patient here and chip away here is kind of the goal as they go inside to Gaffney. Gaffney, spin move, nice play. Just couldn't get the basket there. But a nice move by Gaffney there. Just couldn't get it to fall. Now Polachek to the right side. Lewis. Lewis looking for a pick from Endort. Gets it. And then she gets bumped. And a foul will be called on Olivia. As Oliveira is the call. Pardon me. Low fouling game so far, Eric. Two team fouls for UCF, four against the Pirates. And the way Coach described the last meeting was, you know, it was yep. pretty much a hack fest. Um, a lot of street ball characteristics. So this game a little bit more poised, under control, better defense. Gregory looks for a pick from Endor, gets it. Now she pulls up from the free throw line and swishes it. Oh, yeah. Gregory. Aliyah Gregory. Maybe the most improved player in the American Conference has 13 now for the Knights as they have their biggest lead of the day, 18, 35-17. They swing it around to Torre for three. She's hit two in this, but she misses there. Gets her own rebound, drives to the basket, scores off the glass, and one. Nice play by Torre, the senior. Yeah, two able to follow her own shot. I know. You know, sometimes you forget to do that once you get so into the game, but she followed it, it paid off, and it's two for ECU. Nice play by Torrey, but it's been all UCF so far. Here is we're in the second quarter. The Knights leading big with the hustle plays from Omokore, leading the Pirates 35-19. to You're watching American Conference Women's Basketball here on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids. 
is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. De ver o sonho meu do meu filho sendo realizado. Isso não tem preço. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When learning creates leaders. Ideas are ignited. Focus gets sharper. And service connects generations. We commit our expertise to heal, to discover, and to drive our region forward to a brighter tomorrow. East Carolina University. Tomorrow starts here. We are American. We are the spark that ignites, dazzling, brilliant, intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. Tickets are now on sale for the 2017 Frontier Communications American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship. Head to Mohegan Sun Arena March 3rd through the 6th to watch all 11 American teams in action fighting for an automatic berth to the NCAA Tournament. Tickets start as low as $20. Get yours today by visiting the Mohegan Sun box office, going online to mohegansun.com or Ticketmaster, and also available by phone at one 800 745 3,000. Welcome back here to the CFE Arena in Orlando, Florida. You're watching American Conference Women's Basketball on the American Digital Network. UCF with a 35-19 lead over East Carolina. Eric Lopez alongside Despina Barton. And Despina, a historic night on Tuesday night for UCF in this program as they knocked off their in-state rivals, number 22 ranked USF for their first ever win against a top 25 team during the season. Yeah, their first win at USF since 19. 19- 80. So these two teams have very storied programs. We know about the war on I-4. UCF, Gregory there and the excitement, having a career night. What a win and what a win at this time for this program to kind of solidify and affirm everything that Coach Abe has got going with this unit. Aaliyah Gregory had 34 points in that win. Of course, a Tampa native, that was a bit of a homecoming for her. And she was fired up. UCF hadn't beaten USF since 1980, 19 straight meetings USF had won. UCF had never won in Tampa. They never have won in the Sun Dome at USF. They were 0-12 lifetime in Tampa. As there's a a foul call, there's a UCU trying to trap there, down 15 with 4.36 to go. But huge win. You mentioned UCF and USF have this rivalry going. They have a I-4 war trophy battling with all sports. And uh, that was a big win for them, knocking off the Bulls and putting this pro- a signature win for Coach Abramson and for this program. And I think Coach Abe, she even talked to us in the pre-production meeting that she didn't know about all the storylines between UCF and USF. And apparently that uh, Aaliyah Gregory was not recruited or offered by USF. So it was kind of a one-up situation there. Zakira Lewis, a Bartow High School grad, which kind of meets in the middle there between Orlando and Lakeland. So a lot of uh, internal ties that Coach Abe was not aware about. Just proud of her team and the way that they, they finished a game. Schuler at the line, hits the second, so she splits the free throws as UCF leads by 16. Of course, UCF USF for a while didn't play in women's basketball, so they even though it's the, the, they hadn't beaten them since 1980, they'd only have been playing 19 times since then as the drive is a foul there. But, of course, UCF, that was a huge win, knocking off USF. First ever win over a top 25 in program history. It was a program that turned into Division I in 1984-85. And uh, what a job Coach Abe has done, Coach, as they refer to here, here at UCF. Already 16 wins. There's an Aaron pass and a steal. Right. Two on one. Nice bounce pass to Gregory who scores. And the Tampa native Gregory leaving uh, right now picking up where she left off in Tampa as UCF now up 18, 38 to 20. And that was one of the questions this being a, how would this team respond after an emotional win against your in-state rivals? 
how would they come out? Would they come out uh, let down? Would they be a let down? Would they be flat? That has not been the case so far. No, and, and, and that was the case earlier in the season, but you see the heart, the hustle not letting down. Here's a steal. KK Wright getting out in front of it. Aaliyah Gregory running the lane. Textbook stuff here. Waits for the defender to go right over her. These Knights are performing at a very high level now, and earlier in the year, it wasn't like that. They'd get a win and they'd settle, but now they're relishing in it, and they know how it makes them feel inside, and to win is fun. Winning is fun. Practice is fun. You keep it going, the season keeps going. UCF with the basketball here, leading 38-20. to 20. Gregory drives, pulls up, again scores. That is her vintage, Aaliyah Gregory. Such command, such control for Gregory, who now has 17 to lead UCF. And a timeout for Coach Macy and the Pirates. As once again, this being Aaliyah Gregory, right now East Carolina, nobody in the conference has any answers for her. No, she's the most consistent when she can curl and elevate over you. Nobody's in her way. It goes down. Gregory, 17 points on 8 of 13 from the field. She scored 20 in the first half on Tuesday night against USF, so she's been getting off to big starts. And you get the sense, this Bina, that this night team feeds off of her. If she's off to a good start, the rest of the team has a lot of confidence and energy. Yeah, she certainly sets the pace for this unit and also alleviates pressure from those other shooters. You get to have some fun out there. Zai gets to chase some loose balls. The group gets to run in transition. Then you're going to maybe see some defensive options here. Try some different things out as this game either stays at this range. And as far as the Knights in control, you're going to see Coach Abe want to see different looks from these girls. Claytor drives, can't hit. And unfortunately for Coach Macy and the Pirates, they're in that mix of another drought. Only five points here in the second quarter. We got 325 to go. And that's been kind of a bugaboo for East Carolina is they always have that stretch that kind of dig, uh, really gets them in a hole. And we're seeing that right now in the second quarter. There's a nice feed inside. Oh, and the ball rims out. Offensive rebound, though, by Schuler, And she draws the foul and will go to the line. But right now, everything on the momentum side is on UCF. Yeah, you see some Knights jerseys already heading towards the other way. It's no, it's Nyala Schuler fighting and battling in the paint for that board. The intensity level not going down here. And so Schuler will go to the line. A very versatile player for UCF. Can guard up to four uh, positions. Really makes this defense go for UCF as the first free throw is good. A defense that is number one in the American Conference, forcing turnovers. Number two in scoring defense, only behind UConn. They have a pretty good defense we've we've seen. But yeah. they, it, it, but that's the the identity for this UCF team is their defense. As the second free throw is in and out, UCF up 21. If you're Coach Macy here, you're just trying to get some momentum, right? Here in the last three minutes to go into the locker room with some positives. Yeah, you definitely want to get some easy buckets to go in, chip away a little bit at this lead, make it so not hard to swallow at the break. Keep working the ball inside, and, and again, the defense showing true here for the Knights. Cornelia Wright brings it up. Lewis for three, in and out. And a rebound to East Carolina. Bannister will bring it up for the Pirates. Where is the scoring going to come from? They try to go inside to Gaffney. Gaffney, rare time. She gets one-on-one, -on -one, tries to take advantage, cannot. And she misses, and here comes UCF. 2.29 to go, first half. Lewis had a red-hot first quarter, scored nine in the first. Has yet to score here in the second. She drives and draws a foul, and she'll go to the line. And UCF attacking, not settling for jump shots this being They're attacking. They're looking to feed the post, and they're also looking to drive. Yeah, and we saw that at morning shoot-around. It was important to get that ball down low to feed the big women that are working so hard down there and then not kick it back out. You're going to know that those defenders drop down and you want to find that open man. Lewis, by the way, entering tonight's game three threes away from 250. She's got one today, hit one in the first quarter, so she needs two more for that. You're right, an all-time leader in UCF. Yep, her and uh, Aaliyah Gregory passed that 1,000-point benchmark as well. She hits the second one, has 11 points, and of course, Lewis and Gregory, they account for over 40% of this offense, so when they're both clicking, they, the UCF becomes a really tough team to beat. A team that's 6-6 six and six in the conference, 
in the mix right now to try to get a top, finish in the top five in the conference. There's a nice job by the Pirates breaking the press and Gaffney scoring there. As they need Gaffney to get going as East Carolina down 21, 43-22. Here with two minutes to go here in the second quarter. Now right to Thigpen. Inside Om Omakore. Right. The freshman. Oh, a little errant pass there. She thought Gregory was going to continue to move to the corner. She did not. Let's look at this Pirates' last basket by Gaffney. Yeah, not everybody was set there. Gaffney able to slide in on the weak side and execute. It was beautiful. That's how it's going to have to be. Otherwise, Gaffney's going to have to be very creative with shaking off two white jerseys. Gaffney did a great job there, too, moving without the basketball. Now East Carolina trying to cut this under 20, get some momentum into the locker room here in the final minute and a half. As Frazier drives, pulls up, and gets the roll. Nice job there by Alex Frazier, the sophomore. And East Carolina now cuts it to 19, 43-24, with a minute 19 to go in the first half. Right. Feeds it up to Schuler, to Thigpen. Thigpen. To McCorey. To Gregory. Ten on the shot clock. Gregory trying to drive. Draw some couple of pirate defenders. Kicked it out. Right. Five on the shot clock. Shoots. Scores. Cornelia K.K. Wright, the freshman out of Orlando, Florida, scores to give UCF a 45-24 lead. You saw her hesitation earlier when she had an open shot. This time forced to shoot it, and she makes it. Maybe building a little confidence here. And now East Carolina with the ball. Trailing 45-24. Trying to feed the post. UCF, though, with pressure there. Johnson got six on the shot clock, five on the shot clock. Pirates got to do something with it. They drive and score. Nice play by Raven Johnson. Freshman scores. It's 45-26 UCF, and Coach Abramson Henderson will call a timeout. Try to draw up a play here with 18.5 seconds to go. We'll hope to be joined by Coach Abe here at the end of the first half. UCF with a 45-26 lead, 6-6 six and six in the conference for UCF. That's the most wins they've had in the American Conference since joining the league. They, the 16 wins this season for UCF, the most they've had since 2012-2013. And they've already doubled their win total from last year, and that's something I'm sure East Carolina can certainly look at in the mirror and say, we can be like UCF with all our young players and turn this around in a blink of an eye. As the Knights with a 19-point lead here with 18.5 seconds, East Carolina trying to get a stop here and get some momentum into the locker room. Now Gregory, shot clock off. Gregory to the right side, will hold it here. We'll get a pick here from Schuler. Eight seconds, loose ball. Nice picked up by the Knights. Five seconds, right, got to do something with it. Three, two, one, pulls up, right. Too strong, and that will do it for the end of the first half. A half that saw the Knights dominate. Shooting over 50% from the field. 54% in the first half for UCF, and they go into the locker room, leading East Carolina 45-26 to 26 over the Pirates. As Coach Abramson Henderson making her way to talk to Despina Barton here and get her thoughts here in the first half. As they get set to set her up with Despina. As UCF dominated from the get-go, and they jump out to a to a 19-point lead. All right, let's toss it over now to Despina who's with Coach Abe. Thanks, Eric. Coach, you talked about how important it was to shut down Kristen Gaffney. How impressed with you? Or with you, with your team this year in the first half? Yeah, I mean, defense always starts our offense, obviously, and we're doing a good job of holding their go-to player down, which is her, number 24. And she hasn't got a lot of touches on the low block, so that's good. But they've hit way too many threes for me, so we got to really not key on her so much, but we got to get our post out on the wings and, and everything. So, uh, But defensively, we're doing a good job. We're going to tuck it in a little bit more to make sure she doesn't, 
you know, just go off on us. And Tolu Omakori, oh my goodness, just the heart and hustle here in the first half. Yeah, I mean, she's so strong. She doesn't look like it, but she's really hard to guard, offensive rebound-wise, and just even guarding her on low block, it really is not fun guarding her because my coaches hate to guard her every single day in practice. She's just so strong and, you know, plays so hard all the time, every possession, that they're having a hard time with her. All right, Coach, good luck to you in the second half. All right, thank you. Eric? Despina as fakes coach as UCF goes into halftime leading East Carolina 45 to 26. We'll have more here from the CFE Arena in Orlando, Florida as you're watching American Conference Women's Basketball here on the American Digital Network. Well, we have three standards in our basketball program, which are discipline. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. De ver o sonho meu do meu filho sendo realizado. Isso não tem preço. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When learning creates leaders. Ideas are ignited, focus gets sharper, and service connects generations. We commit our expertise to heal, to discover, and to drive our region forward to a brighter tomorrow. East Carolina University. Tomorrow starts here. We are American. We are the spark that ignites, dazzling. Brilliant. Intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. Gotten here from the American Digital Network studio. Thanks for tuning in to an all new episode of The Rise. We've got some history to talk about today. The Yukon women reached the century mark last night for consecutive wins, and what a magical evening it was. It rained hundreds, quite literally, but this bill might be worth more than the real thing. Here's how it went down Gabby Williams scored a career high 26 points, and Nafisa Collier 18 to help the top ranked Huskies beat number six South Carolina. 66 to 55 in front of a sellout crowd of over 10,000 at Gamble Pavilion. And spotted in that crowd were some Yukon legends, Sue Bird, Maya Moore, Morgan Tuck, and Brianna Stewart showing some love for their alma mater. Congratulations to the Husky family on a truly remarkable accomplishment and looking forward to seeing the rest of the journey unfold. Still a lot more work to do with all eyes set on March. And over to the men's side, it was a wild week in the American as SMU's 60-51 win over number 11 Cincinnati vaulted the Mustangs into a half-game lead atop the conference standings. With a lockdown defense, SMU has held 19 straight opponents to 66 or fewer points and has won 18 of those contests. Shemi Ojale led all scorers with 18 points in the win, earning American Player of the Week honors in the process. Earlier in the week, the junior posted his fourth double-double of the season, scoring a career-high 30 points to go along with 10 rebounds and a 16-point win at Temple. With three weeks left in the regular season, the jockeying for seeds is well underway with several important games on the horizon. The marquee matchup of the week will take place Saturday night as we'll see a resurgent Houston team hosting SMU in a Texas showdown. The Cougs, led by Damian Dotson, six straight games with 20 or more points have won five consecutive matchups to move into possession of third place. A win would bolster Houston's NCAA tournament bid as we come down the stretch in the regular season. And speaking of the NCAA tournament, the road to Clearwater and possibly the road to Omaha begins Friday for American Athletic Conference baseball teams as the 2017 season gets underway. The American enjoyed another banner year in 2016 as the conference sent three teams to the NCAA regionals and saw East Carolina narrowly miss out on a spot in its first College World Series. The Pirates' quest to get to Omaha will be a key theme in 2017. East Carolina was the clear favorite in the American this season and is ranked as high as number six nationally in this year's preseason polls. 
The Pirates will get a good test out of the shoot this season as they open with a three-game series at Ole Miss. Tulane and UConn both look to get back to NCAA tournament play as well. Tulane won the Americans' regular season title last year, and new head coach Travis Jewett makes his Green Wave debut with games against Army and Air Force this week. UConn, which won the American tournament title in 2016, has a three-game series against UMass Lowell down in Florida. Houston narrowly missed out on a spot in the NCAA Regionals last year, and the Cougars bring a talented squad into this week's opening games against Wake Forest and Nichols State. Elsewhere in the American on opening week, Cincinnati heads to Northwestern State, Memphis hosts Tennessee, UCF hosts Siena, and USF hosts Iowa. Over to softball where the first weekly honors were announced on Monday. USF senior Kristen Wickoff was tabbed American Player of the Week. Wickoff led USF to a 3-1 week, batting 600. In a win over number 6 Michigan, she reached base twice and scored twice to help the 25th ranked Bulls to an upset victory. Wickoff had three multi-hit games and was a perfect 3-for-3 three three on stolen bases last week. Memphis junior Molly Smith earned Pitcher of the Week honors. Smith went 2-1 and one in three appearances at the FIU tournament. The junior struck out eight batters last week and earned a complete game win over the host Panthers, who are receiving votes in the national polls. And in women's golf, UCF senior Ashley Holder was named the Women's Golf Player of the Week last Wednesday after posting a top 10 finish at the UCF Challenge. Holder tied for 10th in a field of 96 that included 10 ranked teams. She led the Knights to a third place finish in the team rankings. Don't forget the 2016 American Men's and Women's Swimming and Diving Championship gets underway in Houston, Texas this week. You can catch all of the evening sessions Wednesday through Saturday, live and for free on the American Digital Network. Coming up next, we feature a very important member of the Temple family. He's quiet and he's the life of the party. Stay with us. We are American. We operate from a place of power, a place where what goes up doesn't necessarily come down, where the laws of physics are thrown out the window and high off the glass. It's power that moves us forward by leaps and bounds, the kind of power that brings the house down so the house can rise up. That's power. We are power. We all know there are just some people who give more of a hoot than others. And if you haven't guessed it yet, yes, we're talking about Hooter the Owl. While we may never know his true identity, we do know he brings the spirit, laughs, and a whole lot of photo ops to Temple Athletics. Temple's Tracy Yatsko sat down with the man inside the suit. Hooter, thanks for being with me. It's nice to be here. We're going to try and talk as much as we can without giving away your identity. I know it's top secret, so let's start with the basics. How old are you, what's your year, and what's your major? Uh, I'm 22, I'm a senior, and I'm in mechanical engineering. So what inspired you to become Temple's mascot? Uh, so when I came to school when I was a freshman, a few of my roommates actually knew one of the owls. So at the time, I was like, I'm going to be going to the all these games anyway. I'm super animated and goofy, so why not uh, get a little sweaty and do a little more fun of a perspective? So how does someone become Hooter? So there's actually an audition process where there's an out-of-suit interview and an in-suit audition. So I went through all the motions. They said, like, what happens if the other team scores and put on some music and let me dance? And then took me out of the suit and I got to uh, have that little identity switch and explain my side of the story. So I've always wondered this about mascots. When you take photos with people, do you smile inside? Yes, I do. The fun thing is that I can choose also when I don't smile, like since I would be making funny faces and just be like, if someone I know, I'll be like scowling on the inside or something, but kind of hard to have all these pictures in front of you and not to be smiling even if they can't see you. So who's the most famous person you've taken a photo with? As he was transitioning into being like the guy for the Philadelphia 76ers. I was wandering the sideline of the football game and saw a tall figure on the sideline. It happened to be Jewel Okafor right after he got drafted. Do you have a pre-warm-up ritual before a game? Usually it's just getting up there early so I can strap on my feet and make sure I'm looking good. My feathers are all fluffed and ready to go. What is your most embarrassing moment? So... Last season, when we were down in Orlando for the conference championship basketball tournament, uh, we got to do a little segment where I was playing basketball against the Bearcat and the Yukon Husky. I go to play on defense, and the Bearcat 
goes and bumps into me and off comes the head. To this day, I do not know if I was on camera or not, but I just quickly scrambled up and threw it on, acted like nothing happened. What is it like inside? Really, it's just you have that beak, that's all you can see through. Sometimes people try to say hi to me through my peripherals and I just miss high fives left and right. When it comes to the vision, it's a little funny because his eyes are above where my eyes are, so like I'm looking one way, he's looking another. But the funniest moment is whenever I walk past the reflection or I look down at my shadow and I remember like, oh wait, I'm a bird right now. What does being Hooter mean to you? Uh, being Hooter for me is just, I've been fortunate enough to experience Temple from the most unique perspective. I've gotten to storm the court in suit for some of the biggest games that we've had. I've gotten to travel with the team and really just have a front row seat to some of the biggest moments that this school has seen. Really, I would just say that being a mascot is a very fun, but at times like unrewarding job. It's like, I'll go to this event, I'll walk around and be like the life of the party. And then I take off the suit and I'm walking through the same room and no one recognizes me. So it's kind of like a very self-fulfilling job, but you don't really get too much of the uh, accolation. As both Temple men's and women's basketball head into the home stretch of the regular season, they'll look to strengthen their NCAA tournament resumes and hopefully add another feather to their caps. Thanks to Campus Connect's Tracy Yatsko for sitting down with Hooter and best of luck to the Owls this season. That's all we have for you today on The Rise. Thanks for tuning in. Happy Valentine's Day. All right, thanks to Haley Alton there for the latest news in the American Conference. We're back here at the CFV Arena in Orlando, Florida, here on the American Digital Network. UCF with a 45-26 lead over East Carolina. Eric Lopez alongside Despina Barton. And Despino, we wondered about UCF after that big win, their biggest win in program history against USF on Tuesday night. How would they come out? Boy, they've come out really good. Yeah, they look fierce. They look strong. They're doing everything right, boxing out, getting the easy jumpers, the putbacks, fighting in the paint here, creating space. I mean, there's nothing these Knights aren't doing right in the first half, and you can tell they're leading by 19 because they are doing that. Now, no knock on East Carolina. They're beaten up. They've lost two of their key starters leading into this game. They're having to do new and more with younger players, and they're now seeing a complete UCF team that is finding their footing. It's been all UCF so far here in the first half. They've shot the ball well from the field. Out dominating them, East Carolina on the boards, 25-13. You name it, they've done it. So we'll see what the Pirates have as an answer here coming up here in the start of the third quarter. As you look at the half, stats here, all UCF, 54% from the field. East Carolina only shooting 30, and UCF dominating the boards. Yeah, so 25-13 on the boards there as the Knights really controlling the game from the get-go. Shot the ball well for 54%. ECU only at 30% from the field. 25-13 on the boards. And really, the three-point line's the only one has kept for ECU. Now, Despina Barr is going to be joined here shortly by Coach Heather Macy of the Pirates. As Despina will be here with Heather Macy. Take it away, Despina. Coach, tell me a little bit about, you see the 19-point deficit. How do you begin to chip away at that here in the second half? Well, our go-to players and our leading scorers need to do that for us. They need to be our leading scorers, getting high percentage shots. They're going to have to be more aggressive getting to the hole. Yeah, tell me this. How do you answer and try to shut down Aaliyah Gregory, too, in the well, second half? I mean, she's incredible right now. She's on a really, really hot streak. Got to limit her touch, and she's getting loose way too early in transition. All right, Coach, good luck to you Thank in the second you. half. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Thanks to Spina. Coach Macy fired up. Trying to get her team going here to start the second half. And 45-26, uh, of course, Aaliyah Gregory, part of the honor roll this week. Uh, Coach Macy talked about how she's a tremendous player. She was part of the honor roll this week for uh, in the American Conference. Part of a deep, talented field. You see Hinshaw there from USF. Tremendous talent. Was the freshman of the week. Collier, of course, part of that stacked UConn team that Still undefeated. Wonder 100th game, by the way, Monday night. She, she's a big part of that. How about Fountain for Temple, who reached the top 25 for the first time in over 10 years? She's a big part of that. Shanice Johnson, Miss Consistency at Cincinnati, also making the honor roll. And Taylor Williams of Memphis, a Memphis team that's coming on. And, of course, Aaliyah Gregory will make honor roll. And she'll be a contender for Player of the Week. Of course, Lakska of USF was is the reigning Player of the Week for USF. But Despina... Gregory making a strong case this week to be the player of the week in the conference. 34 points against USF on Tuesday night. 
And already 17 here in the first half of this one. Yeah, she's the gift that keeps on giving. You think that maybe she slowed down or kind of cooled off, and certainly not the case when she finds her rhythm and drives down the paint, pulls up the J. That's becoming her signature move. Alley, a lob play here to start the second half and goes out of bounds to UCF. Coach Macy fired up there, Despina. I think he's looking for some fire from her leaders to get going here and get off to a start here in the third quarter. Oh, for sure, especially now, you know, with her group being led by underclassmen. She is going to rely on the Kristen Gaffney, on some of those uh, Bree McDonald, those girls with experience to guide the ship right now. East Carolina pressing here to start the quarter. The UCF goes inside, and the foul is called. As Oma Corey, who had that big first quarter and got UCF off to a great start, will go to the line. Yep, Oma Corey back to doing what she does best, fighting in the paint, pulling down the boards. This one doesn't go in. I could tell she was a little frustrated because she thought she put up a good shot. Um, but anyways, we'll take two here on the line. Oma Corey misses the first. She had 9.7 rebounds in the first half. Of course, Gregory leading the way for UCF with 17 points. Lewis with 11 for East Carolina. It's been Khadija Torre with nine to lead the Pirates as well, McCory now is double figures with ten points. The Knights with three and double digits here. Yeah, good balance there. UCF now with a 20-point lead. Now see what East Carolina can find their offense. And play toward there's a three-pointer from the top of the key. No good. And offensive rebound by the Pirates. No good. Gaffney, though, puts it up and finishes. Nice job there by Gaffney. And Coach Macy talked about it. Got to get her more involved and get going. Yep, a nice easy bunny there here in the third. Get her warmed up, activated. Now UCF again feeding inside. And a travel call. There is the call. Is turnover on mate Jocelyn Massey. How about Coach Abe? You know, a lot of coaches with a 19-point lead in the first. She was not pleased with her defense in the three-point line. Felt that uh, that was not, was not pleased with that. No, the other team shooting 57.1%, drilling four three-pointers. She wants to shut that down. But in the same instance, you can't give up the open block. That would have been an easy bucket there for Gaffney. It was a great feed to Gaffney. who just was too strong on that. Kind of pick your poison, right? I mean, if you bring too much attention inside to an inside player like Gaffney, it may open up the perimeter game. As a foul is called as Gregory got pushed. All on. All hands on deck to get her up. Now Off the floor as Plater, who is credited with the foul, will exit the floor. UCF with a 46-28 lead here in early in the third quarter. Glad you're joining us wherever you're tuning in on the America Digital Network. Knights winners of three in a row. Zai Lewis for three. No good. Ball goes out of bounds. Off East Carolina is the call. And UCF will retain possession. And guess who was in the middle of that but Omakore. She's been everywhere. Getting involved in every loose ball, offensive rebounds, second chances for the Knights uh, on the boards there. That's been the story. One of many. Inside they feed the ball inside. Again, Omakori. And they want to reward her, Eric. Yep. We see you hustling. We see you grabbing those boards. We see you feeding the outlet. We see you on the ground. We're going to try and feed you. UC UCF. Currently now, out rebounding East Carolina 28 to 15. That was one of your keys. UCF can dominate the boards. They've done that so far. Nearly doubling ECU. First free throw, too strong there. And Omakori, just a sophomore, with a really strong ball game. 10 and 7. Misses, though, the second free throw there. And so now, East Carolina, and you just got to chip away if you're the Pirates here. They've had some good looks here to start the third quarter. They've been patient. It's another good look there, but unable to finish there. But the putback is up and good. Nice job there on the finish for East Carolina. There is Torres really had a good game for East Carolina. And a good first couple of minutes here for East Carolina, getting some high percentage looks. Yeah, and when the Pirates played Memphis in their last outing, they had the same amount of shots as Memphis, but missed nearly 40, 50, 60 percent of them. And um, just missed way too many. So the production, getting the looks, was there, and it is there today. It's just about getting them inside the bucket. And a foul called on UCF there, and the Pirates coming out ready to hear the first two minutes, 40 seconds, down 16, but looking crispier early on offensively. 
Yeah, you can just tell the energy-wise. Yeah. I, I feel like East Carolina has energy, where right now UCF is in kind of a limbo stage. They're going through the motions, but... Well, too many steps is the call there on Raven Johnson, the freshman. And the ball will go over to UCF, right? It's so hard. You have that big lead. You know, and the coaches try to tell you at halftime, hey, it's a new half here, don't, you know, but sometimes you're right. It's, East Carolina has clearly come out with a little more urgency here in the third quarter than UCF. As maybe, we'll see if UCF can match the intensity. As Gregory gets a pick from a Mokore to Lewis. Fifi and Dor in the game for the Knights. So is KK Wright, the freshman. And again, good pirate defense. There's Lewis, three-pointer, drilled it. A three for Zai Lewis. She's got 14 now, and that's the one person you don't want to leave out there in the three-point line of Erie's Carolina. No, we talked about the benchmark that is in play today. If she hits one more three-pointer, hitting the 250 career mark here with the Knights. I wonder how aware she is of that. But, no, that play was drawn up for Zakira Lewis, drawing KK Wright out to where the top of the U is here on this black top and leaving her wide smack open. You see you inbound. We'll get the inbound. Bannister checks back in for the Pirates. Good to see Bannister back in, the redshirt senior out of Jacksonville. Homecoming for her after missing the game against Memphis on Wednesday night. Toure dishes it to Bannister. And loose ball. UCF's got it. Now the Knights bring it up. Right. Looking to push it up. Finds a wide open Fifi and Dora scores. Great look by Wright, the freshman. And a beautiful pass for the finish there. And you see the no letdown here. KK Wright still defending on the other end. You look at this pull down, execution, in transition, indoor with the finish. It's just like they're running practice up and down here, Eric. But impressed by the UCF point guards, Polachek and Wright. They've kind of uh, taken turns, taking starts. Lately, Polachek's been the starter. Wright's been coming off the bench where she's been playing better. But they, uh, their, their court vision has been really good today for both of them. And they've been protecting the basketball. And their intuition is just unparalleled, and that's what you really need for that point guard position. Knights with the pressure, and they get the turnover. The Knights and leading the league here in turnovers, forcing turnovers. Gregory, what a move, goes to the left side, unable to finish, but she gets her own rebound, and she kicks it out to Polachek, and the Knights' offense will reset with 6-10 to go here in the third. Lewis. Lewis looks for a pick from Omokore. Lewis gets bumped. Now gives it to Gregory. Gregory on the left side. Drives, pulls up underneath the free throw line and drills it. Boy, that has been her go-to move. Able to drive and pull up and score in control. She now has 19 and the lead up to 23. It's all day for Gregory when she gets right into her sweet spot there, about six feet off of the black paint. There's a three-pointer by Torre. Another one for her. She's been the really the best player today for East Carolina. That's her third three-pointer of the game. She's got 14 in the ball game and trying to keep the Pirates within striking distance as Gregory gets fouled there on the bump. But Torre has been, uh, Khadija Toure has been really good, Toure, here for the Pirates today. 14 points on, really on 5 of 10 from the floor. Three of five from the three-point line. And really, she's been the that offensive spark that's, She's, the question is, can they find somebody else to help her? No, she's basically the oxygen bubbles when you're underwater. She's the one keeping them somewhat alive here at this point. But, yeah, you need somebody else, too, to have the one-two punch. Gregory feeds the post inside. Great look. Unable to finish there is Omokore. But the Knights get the offensive rebound. Yeah, and Dor getting in there, getting a touch and out to her guard. Gregory with a pull up and scores again. Aliyah Gregory. Gregory. They just don't have an answer for her, but then again, nobody does in the conference right now. 21 for Gregory. That's her average in conference play as Frazier misses the shot and the rebound to UCF. And right now for East Carolina, they're just one and done. What's really tough is that UCF doesn't just have one uh, weapon at this point. There's Aliyah Gregory, then you have your post girls, and then you have Zaya outside you to protect the three. It's right now that East Carolina cannot give up or they cannot find an answer because they can't give up a body. You let, you know, you double up on uh, 
Lewis or you double up on Aaliyah, and then somebody's open. There's just too many weapons, too many options here for the Knights. Offensive foul called on UCF takes us to the media timeout. 4.35 to go in the third quarter. The senior, Zakaira Lewis. Die for three, drilling it. All UCF leading by 20. You're watching American Conference Women's Basketball here on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my child being realized. This doesn't have a price. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When learning creates leaders, ideas are ignited, focus gets sharper, and service connects generations. We commit our expertise to heal, to discover, and to drive our region forward to a brighter tomorrow. East Carolina University. Tomorrow starts here. Tickets are now on sale for the 2017 Frontier Communications American Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship, March 9th through the 12th at the Excel Center in Hartford. Be there as all 11 American teams compete for the conference crown and an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Single game and championship weekend ticket packages are on sale this month and can be purchased online at excelcenter.com or by telephone at 877-522-8499. We are America, the conference of opportunity, the opportunity to chase dreams, the opportunity to make your mark and change the game, because that's power. We are power. Welcome back to America Digital Network's coverage of the American Conference Women's Basketball here from the CFE Arena in Orlando. UCF leading East Carolina 53 to 33 with 4.35 to go. Eric Lopez alongside the Spina Barton. And the Spina, if you look at the American Conference standings, uh, which are not updated on that graphic, you got U UConn, of course, at the top, 12 and 0 in the conference. But Temple 10 and 2, USF 9 and 3. Tulane seven and six, UCF right in the mix, six and six in the conference. It's a big game for UCF. They go to Tulane on Wednesday. That's a uh, the game that'll be shown here on the American Digital Network. But UCF trying to get into that top five, uh, you know, standings in the American Conference because the top five teams that finish in the top five get a bye into the quarterfinals of the conference tournament, which will be at, at the XL Center in Connecticut, March 9th through the twelfth. Yeah, that's critical. Or there is a possibility of taking that sixth seed. I believe, right, the sixth or the seventh, you end up in the opposite bracket of UConn. Sure. And another way to stay alive in conference play. UCF at the basketball, 55-33. If this one holds out, the Knights will go to 7-6 and six in the American. 17-9 and nine on the season. With a foul there called. And, of course, you mentioned UCF will be on the road Wednesday at Tulane, a game you can watch here on the American Digital Network. And then they finish at home with two home games. So you look at that conference right now. Tulane, on the other hand, for example, they've got a tough stretch. Tulane has to host UConn tomorrow, then host UCF. Cincinnati, who split with UCF this season, uh, they're playing today against Memphis. So it, it's very tight over there. As the first free throw is up and good by Thigpen. And then a big game tomorrow on the American con uh, Conference as well. Temple at USF in Tampa. How does Jose Fernandez's USF Bulls respond after the loss to UCF? And then Temple, who just entered the top 25 for the first time since 2006. That's a battle for second place. Temple 10-2, and two, USF 9-3. and three. That's a huge game to try to get that two seed. And as you mentioned, if you're the two seed and the three seed, you're opposite bracket of UConn. So a uh, huge game there tomorrow. Interesting to see how USF responds. There's a loose ball. Jump ball is the call. Arrow possession will stay go to UCF on that. So it will be a very exciting stretch here 
of the regular season. There is the standings right there. Of course, UConn 12 and 0. Winners of 100 in a row, beating uh, South Carolina Monday night. Temple, 10-2, and two. USF just a game back, and then Tulane, UCF, Cincinnati, Memphis, Despina, all with six conference losses. That is as tight as it gets from all the way from four to seven. Not much separation there. No, no wiggle room. But like you said, these other opponents, Temple, Memphis, they're going to see some – you're going to see their UConns. They're going to see those teams that, you know, could <laughs> – um, give them another loss, which could propel UCF if they stay on pace and they continue to take care of business in that five seed. It's very possible at this point now. And I know, Eric, you and I talked about before the game, well, heck, if I don't get it out of the conference, if I'm not the top seed into to the NCAA tournament, get an automatic big, how else can UCF or East Carolina, how could other teams make it out of the American? Well, the um, automatic bid obviously goes to the uh, conference tournament champion. Of course, this has been a banner year for the American Conference. We've talked about Temple is your first free throws up and good by Omokore. Temple in the top 25, USF in the top 25 in great shape to make the NCAA tournament, both in the 20s RPI, which, which is what the committee uses for at-large teams when they make their selections. Tulane has at 40 RPI-wise. They got some work to do, but they're in the mix for the NCAA, or at least postseason. And then UCF uh, certainly may probably have to win the tournament to have a shot of making the NCAA tournament, but they're in play for postseason basketball, possibly the WNIT, uh, if they can finish the year strong. And uh, that's something they haven't done before. They haven't made postseason UCF since 2011 uh, when they made the NCAA tournament, winning the Conference USA tournament at the time. So there's a miss by the Pirates there. Fifi and Dor, they, they give Feeder the ball. So a lot to play for. There's a three by Lewis. No good. Too strong. Loose ball uh, goes out of bounds to East Carolina, but... UCF currently at 16 wins here. They can finish strong and a good showing in the conference tournament. Could play themselves into postseason, which would be a remarkable job for this program to get them in. But it shows you the strength of this league. Probably three to four teams in the NCAA with Cincinnati in play as well for postseason as long as well for UCF. So a great year for the, the American Conference, which uh, everybody focuses on UConn but they don't focus on the great competition that UConn has to face on a nightly basis here in the conference. There's a three by Toure, who has been the star here for East Carolina. She has shown up to play as he drills another three-pointer. And Pirates still down 22. The question is, can someone else come and help her to get a run going here? Mm. Meanwhile, UCF has found their go-to scores, quite a few, which has been great. And we talked about this earlier, how this Knights team has really turned around under Coach Abrahams and Henderson. None of these young ladies on the court or anybody she recruited into this class. She's taken the cards and ultimately uh, refiled them and made this into such a winning team. They've doubled wins from a year ago, and this has been the most conference wins since they joined the conference in 2013-14. Gregory trails it. Both free throws good for Gregory now, who's got 23, a game high for Aliyah Gregory, and UCF pushes the lead up to 60-36. to Of course, it's a big day for UCF in East Carolina, meeting here in Orlando on the women's court. There's a foul called. The three-pointer, they're going to count it. The three-pointer plus a foul. So potential four-point play here. And Toure has been tremendous. Another three for her. That's five threes for her. She's up to 20 points. Scored more than half of the Pirates' points. And they're going to get the possession here because the foul was off the ball soon as the shot was made so a big opportunity here for possibly a five point uh, possession or maybe even six here swing here yeah two ray and the pirates aren't done they're not ready to back down on this one get back on that flight beautiful take beautiful by g the freshman getting her first start today with a great finish you saw there the promise there that was a beautiful drive and score and east carolina's cut it to 19. The ball will stay here. You see the battle here in the ball paint. Ball goes out of bounds there. Here's the last ECU bucket and the take with the lane on the right. She's finding her footing, Eric. Well, and I think that's the big thing from a, for East Carolina. Getting these young players like, gee, all this experience will pay off, if not later this season, but certainly next season and beyond. 
That's kind of the goal. Oh, what a feed by right inside to Massey who gets fouled and he'll go to the line. But I think that's the, for East Carolina, you know, with these young players and their freshmen like G is a freshman getting their start today. You got Dominique who's also a starter. You know, some of these freshman players on this roster, part of a top 50 class that East Carolina has brought in. Uh, hoping to kind of pay dividends down the road and getting the experience now. You can't. You can only practice and scrimmage so much. Game action is where you value, get all your experience and experience, and you learn from it. Yeah, and Coach Heather Macy didn't expect for this team to be where they are right now. They suffered some key injuries down the line. Only had four returners. Lost their two best players um, to two of their leaders. Yeah, two of their leaders to knee injuries and Fanny. Shutu Rush back against SMU. That was the last time the team actually won. And then two games later, Gabriel Holston also hurting her knee and both having to sit out the rest of the year. And as we've talked about, this league is so good that, man, it's just tough to battle when you're shorthanded as Gregory draws the foul. Coach Macy, though, not making an excuse for that, just saying, you know, you just got to get better. She, she feels good about this team. They have playing hard and they feel that they'll find it and listen uh you got a couple weeks to go you know you got time to find it and then next thing you know by tournament to conference tournament time and get some wins under your belt you never know there's gregory at the line makes the first yeah coach said these girls haven't quit they haven't lost that motivation and and per- and preparing and going out there that you know she's, the last thing she wants these girls to do is be good losers you don't want to be a good loser. they have the the desire to win it's just it's just the timing you know the youth you, it really expedites your your growth curve <laughs> spending those extra minutes out on here but like you said eric will only pay dividends in the future for this program UCF up 23. I mentioned busy day for these two pro, uh, universities going against each other. The men's teams will play today at 4 o'clock in Greenville. So uh, that's a big game there as well. There's a deflection there. One sh- a handed shot there is no good. And the rebound is Gregory will have it in about a five second difference between the play clock and the shot clock. So Gregory. Handed it off to Lewis. Lewis the senior. To Polachek. To Lewis. Left corner. Drives to the basket. Dishes it off. Fifi and Dor Gets fouled and she'll go to the line. UCF's Look. done a nice job today too. Feeding the post. Oh yeah. That was a point of emphasis here. They knew what they wanted to do. Get them activated. Keep the ball moving. Big thing uh, for Coach Abe is finding the right shot. The right shot to take at the right time. That means moving the ball. Drawing a couple defenders. Dishing out. Reading the court. You're seeing all those things come into play. And though the spacing, I don't think, was right on in this last possession, Endor is still making it count with hitting this first free throw. First free throw is up and good is Gregory. Go to the bench, take a break. As Fifi Endor's second free throw is up and good. And UCF increases its lead to 65 66 to 4, 66, excuse me, to 42. It's interesting to see, Eric, that when these last, last time these two teams played, which was it exactly a month ago, and the fact that East Carolina ran the gamut from nearly start to finish. And now you're seeing the commanding force that is UCF and their growth since then, just a month ago. We've come to the end of the third quarter, a quarter that East Carolina came out strong and made a run, but UCF withstood that. As Aaliyah Gregory and Zai Lewis continue to lead the Knights as they're a quarter away from their fourth straight win in the American Conference. They lead East Carolina through three as you're watching American Women's Conference basketball here on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. De ver o sonho meu, do meu filho, sendo realizado. Isso não tem preço. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When learning creates leaders, ideas are ignited, focus gets sharper, and service connects generations. 
we commit our expertise to heal, to discover, and to drive our region forward to a brighter tomorrow. East Carolina University. Tomorrow starts here. We are American. We are the spark that ignites. Dazzling. Brilliant. Intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. Tickets are now on sale for the 2017 Frontier Communications American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship. Head to Mohegan Sun Arena March 3rd through the 6th to watch all 11 American teams in action fighting for an automatic berth to the NCAA Tournament. Tickets start as low as $20. Get yours today by visiting the Mohegan Sun box office, going online to mohegansun.com or Ticketmaster, and also available by phone at 1-800-745-3000. Welcome back. Start of the fourth quarter here at the CFE Arena in Orlando, Florida, the home of the University of Central Florida, UCF, with a 66-41 lead over East Carolina. Eric Lopez alongside Despina Barton. And Despina, we wondered how UCF would come out after their biggest win in program history on Tuesday night in Tampa against nationally ranked USF. First time they've beaten their rivals since 1980. First time they've ever beaten a top 25 team in program history. First time they've ever won in Tampa, and we wondered, would they have a letdown? And the answer has been a resounding no. Absolutely not. This group has shown what it takes to win, and they're continuing to put those those work habits out to display for all of us. They led at 20 at the, 19 at the half and now extended to 25 here at the start of the fourth quarter. They're building on that, that lead. They're not satisfied yet. Polachek inside, get the ball for the UCF. Got three on the shot clock. Got to do something with it. Got a quick thick pin. Pulls up a three because he had to and uh, doesn't hit rim. So that'll be the shot clock violation. Ball over to East Carolina with 9.28 to go in the third. And I think for Coach Macy in East Carolina, you just want to keep playing hard. I thought they played well in the third quarter. A couple of baskets they could have had that they couldn't get it to fall. Otherwise, it would be a closer game. Try to kind of build momentum here for down the road here. Is there a foul called inside? But I think that's what you're playing for for East Carolina right now. Of course, they will host Cincinnati coming up this week and then will finish the regular season at Houston before going up to Connecticut for the conference tournament. But you're trying to build momentum for that conference tournament. Absolutely. You're, you know, you're dealt these set of cards. And now you just have to pull the best out of each player and keep them going. And it's tough to keep girls motivated. This is going to be the 11th loss in a row for this East Carolina team. This, this is not how they envisioned this season to go. But you have to keep going forward. Implement some different options. What you want to see other girls challenge them. It's a tough, I think these are tough situations for coaches more so than kids. They're going to take these losses harder than, than the student athletes will be. And so Coach Macy probably will kind of take this one, digest it, and, and try to pick away a few good things about the third quarter. And still they have they have 9-14 to make up some other, other good things to build on. That's what you do from these matches. You pull the positives, and then you leave behind the negatives and, and keep the ball moving. Yet yeah, luckily they do only have two more games left. Um, you know, that bend but don't break mentality. Pressing UCF here, and they get a turnover after Thais Oliveira made one out of two at the free throw line. Pirates go to the trap, and they get a turnover, but now loose ball, and that'll be a jump ball that will stay with East Carolina with nine minutes to go here in the game. UCF leading 66-42. But Pirates still battling here. And again, two regular season games left. They've got Cincinnati coming up, and then we'll finish at Houston before Go into the conference tournament. Of course, conference tournament, single elimination from the XL Center up in Connecticut. Top five seeds. Top five seeds get a bye into the quarterfinals. First day will be the sixth seed against the 11th seed. So East Carolina, the way it looks like, uh, will play the sixth seed. Of course, seven will play 10, eight will play nine with the top five getting the bye. Three pointer by, missed by Bannister in the rebound to UCF. And the Knights bring the ball up. K.K. Wright. To 
and Fifi and Dora to Massey. To Zai Lewis. Lewis goes inside. Fifi and Dora. Splitting the, the foul. Yep, splitting the double. She knew what she wanted to do there. Had she had one more step closer to the bucket, that one would have been in. So she'll go to the line. And, of course, for UCF, we mentioned they're going to be in Tulane on Wednesday night. That'll be a game that'll be televised here on the American Digital Network. That is a huge game from a conference standing standpoint. And for Tulane, certainly NCAA possibilities on the resume UCF for postseason aspiration. That's a huge game in New Orleans as Gregory comes back in for UCF. And then after that game, UCF will finish at home against SMU a week from today and then finish on Monday night against number 25 Temple. So a couple of big games here for UCF who's building momentum, though, playing their best basketball here late in the year as this team continues to grow. And they lead here by 26, and now they trap. And a push and a foul is the call. Yeah, when you, were not, you and I were at shoot-around this morning, you could feel how infectious everybody's uh, happiness was and, and their energy to compete not only, you know, with themselves, obviously split into teams doing shooting drills, but how contagious that energy is to win. They're starting to, to eat it up and really gravitate towards that. And Coach Abe has been implementing and focusing on defense and focusing on, you know, taking the right shots, moving the ball around, and all these things are starting to uh, pay out dividends for this program. UCF inbounding the ball. Trapped by East Carolina. UCF breaks it. Lewis thought about that three. She has two today, three-pointers. 249 for her career for the senior. That's Gregory. She's got 25 today to lead all scores. Dishes it out. They go back inside. Fifi Endor. Fifi goes inside. Scores. Sweet kiss off the glass there for Endor. So a nice basket for Fifi there. And UCF increases their lead. As Fifi and Dorr now with 10 points. So now four players for UCF in double figures in scoring. Good balance. It's not just the Aaliyah Gregory show today. Just being a good balance for UCF offensively. Oh, for sure. And that's what you can tell and take away from a good team. Usually when you're game planning, it's that one go-to player that you can take out of the game, which UCF has done in the equi- uh, taking Kristen Gaffney out of the equation, and you're seeing how efficient they are. But right now, nobody can put a pulse on the night. It's UCF leading East Carolina 70-42 to at 7.46 to go. You're watching American Conference women's basketball coverage here on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. De ver o sonho meu do meu filho sendo realizado. Isso não tem preço. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When learning creates leaders. Ideas are ignited. Focus gets sharper. And service connects generations. We commit our expertise to heal, to discover, and to drive our region forward to a brighter tomorrow. East Carolina University. Tomorrow starts here. Tickets are now on sale for the 2017 Frontier Communications American Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship March 9th through the 12th at the Excel Center in Hartford. Be there as all 11 American teams compete for the conference crown and an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Single game and championship weekend ticket packages are on sale this month and can be purchased online at excelcenter.com or by telephone at 877-522-8499. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power.
there's Nitro, the UCF mascot, having a good time, as many of the night faithful are today here at the CFE Arena. UCF leading East Carolina, 70-42. to 42. Eric Lopez alongside Despina Barton, back to action, and a foul is the call. As Dominique Claytor, the freshman out of Winston-Salem, threw the foul with 7.40 to go here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, this one was on KK Wright. She was reaching around, trying to pick some pockets, and made that contact. ACU will go to the free throw line. Makes the first free throw. Some interesting, certainly, numbers that jump out to this point. UCF, the speed is shooting 53% from the field. East Carolina, 32. Rebounds, UCF, 36 to 20 for East Carolina. East Carolina's really been able to hang around a little bit by the three point line. Seven of 16 from the three point line. If I guess. That'll be the one thing that uh, UCF will probably focus on is their three-point defense, but otherwise it's been a flawless performance at this point. Yeah, Coach Abel, I'm sure, talk about that in the post game. but you got to think what you're giving up with having to double-team their star and um, uh, uh, Gaffney, Gaffney all yeah. night, you know. Yeah, Gaffney's been held in check so far in this ball game. Six points on three of nine from the field, two rebounds. And uh, they've put two, three bodies on her throughout the game. It's been hard for her to get open and get the ball. And a foul off the ball as they try to set up Gregory. Gregory with 25 here in the midway of the fourth. We talked about having all four, or having four different scores for UCF in double digits. But a lot of other hands on the, on the board as well. And that's the one thing certainly that uh, jumped out for UCF as this during this winning streak is more players have stepped in scoring wise. Earlier in the year they had trouble scoring because they it was either Lewis or Gregory that was doing the scoring and nobody else. But that hasn't been the case. Certainly Gregory's taken her level to a different level as we mentioned, averaging over 21 points a game in conference play. But you still got Zai Lewis who's picked it up and other players like you mentioned today with Endor and Omakore, among others. Gregory. Top of the key, drives, pulls up, <laughs> nothing but net. Make it 27 for the junior, <laughs> Aliyah Gregory. An amazing week for Gregory coming off the 34-point career high in the win over USF. She's averaging over 30 points a game during this three-game winning streak. So she's approaching that as a steal. Here's Gregory, and they're going to call an offensive foul on Gregory on that one. One of the rare times that maybe Gregory not in control there, but uh, nothing wrong with being aggressive there. Ball over to East Carolina with 6.40 to go. Yeah, certainly no letdown here. Made that contact, lowered her shoulder, and that's an automatic foul. And ball goes over to UCF. That night pressure again. Back-to-back -back turnovers that yeah. the Knights are able to force. And guess whose side that was on? Zykira Lewis's side. The one, you know, she thrives off situations like that. Big pen in here now to uh, inbound Greg the ball. Gregory comes out. And that might be the last time we see Gregory today. 11 of 18 from the floor. 27 points. Five rebounds. Three assists in this game for the junior Gregory. Who's letter Knights here trying to get him a fourth straight conference win and I think Gregory certainly is Lewis for three no good too strong but the rebound to Massey Gregory will be in the conversation this week for the American Conference Player of the Week of course you had USF with Latska winning it last this past week could be Gregory who makes it I think a strong case oh absolutely might be the strongest case though in the conference 34 against USF they beat their first ever ranked team you know about all the other firsts they knocked off with that victory not only that, she comes back and offers 27 here. You know, the young ladies putting together good game after good game, which are turning into great games, just like you'd like to see at this point in her college career. And certainly, arguably, the most improved player in the American Conference. Her every category she has improved from last year to this year and has actually even improved them from the pre-conference to the conference. And she's helped UCF to this commanding lead. Looking for their fourth straight win in conference and go to seven and six. As East Carolina, G, got away, got too many steps is the call there, traveling. And that Euro turnover. step took off a little too early, but great thinking. She, she had the vision. She saw the lane open up. She, she might have been all right if she was in the NBA. That, that might have gotten away there. 
but uh, not the case. But, boy, I like what I saw from Gene, her first career start. A lot of speed, a lot of a talent and ability potential there that I think if you're an East Carolina fan, you can certainly hold your head on for the future. Oh, yeah, she puts pressure where, you know, you don't expect to see pressure just purely on her athleticism. Lewis with the fake, pulls up the three to no good, and a rebound to the Pirates on that one. Lewis cool has cooled off, had nine in the first quarter, has 14 for the game. As we're about 5.23 to go in this one. UCF on the verge of sweeping East Carolina in the regular season. Coming into this year, East Carolina had dominated this rivalry, had won the last five meetings between these two teams, including the last year here in Orlando as the missed shot there, no good. But UCF turned this around. They won back on January 18th in Greenville, 54-42. to First time they've won in 10 games in Greenville. And now they're on the verge of sweeping East Carolina. They've swept Houston earlier this year. So, who They've done it on a couple of times in the American Conference, but this will be the second team that UCF has ever swept in conference play in the American. But a year of first for UCF. First ever, ever win in Greenville. And a first ever win in Tampa. A lot of first for Coach Abe and the Knights here in her first season at UCF. Timeout on the floor. 4.50 to go here from Orlando. UCF leading big. You're watching American Conference Women's Basketball here on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. De ver o sonho meu do meu filho sendo realizado. Isso não tem preço. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When learning creates leaders, ideas are ignited, focus gets sharper, and service connects generations. We commit our expertise to heal, to discover, and to drive our region forward to a brighter tomorrow. East Carolina University. Tomorrow starts here. We are American. We are the spark that ignites, dazzling, brilliant, intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way because on this court on any given night the energy of five becomes the power of one that's power we are power tickets are now on sale for the 2017 frontier communications american athletic conference women's basketball championship head to mohegan sun arena march 3rd through the 6th to watch all 11 American teams in action, fighting for an automatic berth to the NCAA tournament. Tickets start as low as $20. Get yours today by visiting the Mohegan Sun box office, going online to mohegansun.com or Ticketmaster, and also available by phone at 1-800-745-3000. And welcome back here. The UCF band out here for the UCF women's basketball game. UCF up 30 with 4.50 to go. Fourth quarter, of course, just around the corner, the Women's Conference Tournament from the Mohican Center, March 3rd to the 6th in Connecticut. The Men's Tournament at the XL Center, March 9th through the 12th. So both tournaments, the women and the men this year in Connecticut. And UCF with a lot of momentum here as we're down to the final week of the regular season coming up here before that conference tournament. Again, the Mohican Center in Connecticut, the home for the Women's Tournament, March 3rd through the 6th. And Right now, if you're Coach Abe and the, the Knights program, you're just trying to keep this momentum moving forward, heading into that conference tournament at the Mohican Center, March 3rd to the 6th. Oh, yeah. If this is any indication, a 30-point lead here with 449 to play. Working some few things you wanted to see. Tolu and McCory hitting the first three throw. Uh, the girls are still attacking the lane. The one thing you don't want to do is, you know, force any injury or force anything out of your realm when you're up this much. That's maybe why we did see we did see uh, Aaliyah Gregory go to the bench a few moments ago. She's put up her 27, and it's been a good night for her. Well, Lavera drills it for the Pirates. 
And we're down to 4.35 to go here in the fourth quarter. So again, the uh, Women's Conference Tournament, March 3rd through the 6th at the Mohican Center in Connecticut. Men's Tournament, March 9th through the 12th at the XL Center in Connecticut. I may have uh, confused the two dates earlier. But uh, certainly uh, best time of the year, conference courts. Two games to go, uh, three games to go for UCF here in the regular season. Two for East Carolina following today. Is right with a nice pass there against the shot clock. Schuler misses, but an offensive rebound for UCF. And you mentioned in the pregame is one of your keys, UCF dominant in the boards. They needed to maintain to be dominant in the boards. They've done that today. And you see how engaged the bench is as soon as uh, KK Wright got that board, the applause, and now she gets rewarded, finds the lane on the left-hand side, the freshman coming into her own skin here on the back end of the season. You talked about her with her starting role for a little while, now coming off the bench. She's really, really thriving and kind of coming in, seeing what Polachek does and imitating that and creating different options. She's given a little bit more time to assess, and as a freshman, that's helped her tremendously. Nine on the shot clock. And got G here. Three-pointer from the corner, no good, and the miss there. By McDonald, who's had a quiet day for East Carolina. The deflection there and a steal as McDonald brings it up. Looking for numbers. McDonald going all the way, coast to coast, off the glass and scores. Nice play by McDonald. And she earned herself a trip to the line. Only the second field goal today for Bree McDonald. Now two of nine from the floor, five points. Your second leading scorer. For East Carolina, we talked about the pregame that her and Gaffney provide over 43% of this East Carolina offense, and uh, both of them have been quiet today. McDonald now with just five points, Gaffney with six as Gaffney gets it, takes a seat. Yeah, the execution of the Knights and their ability to shut down McDonald and Gaffney has proved so successful today. Bit of a pressure here by East Carolina. And now Lewis, the senior, has never won this many games during her career at UCF. They're about to 248 away from their 17th win of the season. The ball goes towards us. I thought you were ready to uh, take the ball there, Despina. You ready, you ready there? You... <laughs> I don't move as quite as quickly as I did when I was these girls' age. <laughs> I don't know, you move pretty quick to get those interviews at halftime and right at the start of the second half. I, I thought you were ready to jump in there. <laughs> Ball goes out of bounds. 2.40 to go here. You see with a 29-point lead. Zai Lewis never has been to the postseason either. A lot of the girls anthemming the fact of getting her there. They don't want this season to end any earlier than it has to. And to get Zai Lewis to the postseason would be so rewarding. The last time UCF made the uh, postseason was the 2011 NCAA tournament. They're going to have to win the tournament to do that, but certainly could play themselves into postseason like the WNIT and others. Whistle there with 219 to go. Part of this strong American Conference course. A big one Wednesday night from Tulane here on the American Digital Network. Huge game to UCF at Tulane. Tulane hosting UConn tomorrow and then UCF. Huge games for Tulane who tries to play themselves from a seeding standpoint. It's a big game. Postseason aspirations. Uh, Tulane trying to get into the NCAA tournament. UCF trying to improve their resume. So that, that's going to be a huge game Wednesday night and we'll have it here on the American Digital Network. And then our final game of the American Digital Network, by the way, Monday night an in-state Texas rivalry, Houston and SMU. First free throw is up by Justice G. I hope the girls get to spend some time in Tulane. It is Mardi Gras time. NBA All-Stars taking over. Well, they'll the be gone by weekend. the time they get there. They'll be gone by the time they get there. I guess the remnants will be there. It'll be a business trip, as coaches like to say. This Knights team on going to a four-game winning streak in conference. More than double their win total from last year. A team that was picked near the bottom in the preseason standings. And here they are fighting to finish in the top five. As we're now approaching the two-minute mark here in this ball game, UCF has led the whole way from the opening tip. And have not looked back. No letdown today as Endor. Too strong there in the rebound of the Pirates. Justice G bringing it up. The freshman to McDonald, and she's called for traveling with 1.45 to go 
here in the ball game. And again, East Carolina will go home, regroup. They will get set to play host Cincinnati on Wednesday night, and we'll finish the regular season a week from today in Houston against the Cougars. And for Coach Macy, it's just you just feel like if they can just get over the hump, get that win, that could maybe kind of relax some of the girls and get some momentum into the conference tournament at the Mohican Center there in Connecticut. Yeah, you see the tall tasso of Cincinnati and Houston next up on the docket, and it, it, it's it's tough. This conference is tough. A strong year in the American Conference as a drive and a score by Alex Frazier. Nice job by her. And we're down to a minute 14 to go here. It's K.K. Wright, the freshman, to Fifi Endor. To Lewis, the senior. A feed inside, Endor. Off glass, no good. Rebound, Massey. Put back is good. And that's been part of the story today. You see, getting second chances, dominating the boards. Yeah, everybody's crashing, creating the, the second chance opportunity. And you have Massey and Endor down there. It's like your two twin towers. They can dominate. 44-25 rebound edge for UCF here tonight. And they're now going to try to kill the clock. About a 13-second difference. Stay tuned for the postgame. We'll have to uh, coach Abrams and Henderson. Uh, will join us here postgame. Hope to also by Aliyah Gregory. That will be part of our postgame coverage here on the American Digital Network. As we're down to 16, three on the shot clock. Right going one-on-one. -on -one, pulls up, misses. And the rebound of the Pirates. Raven Johnson. Frazier. Loose ball. Down to four seconds. Down to three. And East Carolina will just run out the clock. And that'll do it. As the UCF Knights defeat the East Carolina Pirates by a final score of 79 to 51. As the Knights pick up their fourth straight conference win. They improve to an amazing 17 and 9 on the season, 7 and 6 in the conference, while East Carolina drops to 10 and 17, 1 and 13 in the conference. An impressive win by the Knights. It is led from the entire way and improved to 7 and 6, and depending on what happens elsewhere, will move up in the standings in conference play as the Knights were dominant today. Led the whole way, Despina, and uh, we wondered if there would be a letdown for UCF after the emotional win against their rivals, USF. First ever win in a top, against a top 25 opponent. First ever win in Tampa. First ever win against USF since 1980. We wondered if there'd be a letdown. There was not. No letdown in sight. The girls kept their foot on the pedal. Pace was good. Everybody was all in, protecting the paint, grabbing the boards, taking great shots. Their selection, feeding the post was of all emphasis as well tonight, which you could see. As we'll be joined here shortly here in a couple of seconds by the winning coach, Coach Abe, as they refer to here at UCF. Another vic victory, four in a row in the conference for Coach. And the Knights dominant there. And uh, Coach, congrats, a great win wondering about this team this year you're coming off that emotional win going up against usf being a top 25 team winning in tampa how would they come out today boy they came out focused and locked in yeah and i i, I said that you're smart i said that before the game i wrote on the ball on the board fluke you know if you come out and you don't play hard and you don't play like the team you played last tuesday then everybody's gonna think we didn't win that game south florida just had a bad game and so I, I really challenged them because you have to all the time because they've never been in that position before, you know, and I think they did a good job coming out and, and you know, really concentrating defensively in our game plan. This team is completely different than South Florida. They're very athletic. They drive. They rebound like crazy. We didn't do a great job on number uh, two for them. She, she killed us today with her threes, but their other go-to players didn't score as many points as they usually do. Oh, McCorry, I thought, set the tone, got some rebounds early. It got a double figures points, led them in rebounds, and then that set the tone for Gregory. Of course, Fifi Indoor and everybody, good balance. Four players in double figures for UCF, really getting more offense from other players other than Gregory was huge. Right, you're talking about Tolu in, in terms of her offensive rebound putbacks and finishing shots. And, you know, 
Tolu, Tolu can play like that every single game. I keep telling her she's a nightmare to guard just because she's so strong and, you know, she's physical and she'll go get rebounds. And she's like that player that every coach loves that she wants to do all the dirty work and she doesn't mind getting hit. She just got to get balanced and get under control when she gets those offensive rebounds to put them back up. And that's just really her footwork and how she – she jumps really, really high, right? She, and she's coming down in traffic, and that's really hard to do. And so we just got to really get her to come down and land on two feet under control and try to go back up with it. So um, obviously, Aaliyah Gregory did a great job again today. I was going to say, speaking of jumping very high, Aaliyah Gregory creating that space off that jumper and, and, and talk about that development of her coming off the curl and just laying them in. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like it's kind of a fun thing every day because Nikisha Sales guards her and they, they talk a lot of you know, nice words to each other, like a lot of crap. They just talk a lot of crap to each other, and she's been really working and getting in the gym every single day. Leah doesn't take a day off, but neither do a lot of great players either, and so she's just, just been working on that pull-up jumper. And, you know, even in a timeout, I was telling somebody that the posts are open on the duck to pass it to them, and then she went in there pass it to them. And I said, I, I don't want you to pass. Why are you passing? And she's like, oh, okay, coach. You know, so she's getting to that point where she knows that her pull-up jumper is her game and why go in there and get hit? Why do anything else when it's working for her? And we set a lot of those on-ball screens for her, so it will create space for her. And, um, you know, she's she's really fun to watch now. I'm like, gosh, ah, she's really fun to watch. Well, coach, we'll let you enjoy this one. We know we got some fun games ahead, big games. They get bigger as the year goes on, so we're going to let they you enjoy sure this one. Do. Congrats sure on a great do. win, a great All job. Right. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Congrats. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. UCF with the big win, and you look at the stats, final stats there. UCF 46% from the field, East Carolina 33% from the field, dominating the boards 45 26. And that's going to make Coach Abe happy there. As we'll be joined by Aaliyah Gregory here shortly, the star of the game, leading scorer. As Gregory, top scorer in the game, having a big game, following it up with a big victory. And she joins us now here on the post game. And uh, Aaliyah, congrats on a great win, another great performance. Thank you. Talk about this team. You had that huge win against USF mm -hmm. in your hometown biggest win in program history mm -hmm. how did you were able to avoid a letdown here today against east carolina and keep moving on this positive momentum you've been on um i think we just stressed um as a team and as a program that we had a good run we beat a ranked team but we can't dwell on that our season won't end because of that so we had to keep going and we had to make a run and we had to come out and play hard just as if we were playing against usf again yeah, for you, Aaliyah, to come out here and show confidence in your stroke and your shooting ability. When did that jumper really develop for you, and how confident are you going to it whenever? Um, I think my teammates my teammates have a lot of confidence in me, and my coaches know that they're confident in me taking the shots that I take. So um, just putting in time in the gym, and that's how you get consistency. Yeah, Coach talked about the last time you met ECU. It was more of like a street ball fest out there, and this time, you guys, your, your shot selection was much better. Was that in the back of your mind as you guys, as the game was unfolding? Um, yeah, we stressed that all we can practice, getting ball rotations, not just shooting the first shot we get, but making sure we get a great shot. And I think we really did that today, moving the ball well and taking our open shots. So in the highlights of you there, raining buckets, Aliyah Gregory, our star player of the game. Congrats on a great win. Thank Enjoy you. this one and good luck the rest of the year. Thank you. Aliyah Gregory joining us here for the victorious UCF Knights. A dominant performance today against the East Carolina Pirates, uh, Despina. Final thoughts here as UCF dominant win, continue their momentum. Seven and six now in the conference, Despina. Yeah, Eric, UCF is playing some great basketball right now, and it's everything that Coach Abe had envisioned for this group, not knowing much about them coming in, and they've gone out and executed the game plan. Thanks a lot to Despina Barton for joining us on the broadcast. Thanks to our great crew here at the American Digital Network. UCF dominant win over East Carolina, 79-51. Eric Lopez saying so long here from the CFE Arena. I've been watching American Conference basketball here on the American Digital Network. Have a good afternoon, everyone.